y'all, it's Jessica from Sloppy Swatches. Today I have a look at the Through the Stones collection that is available right now on pre-order from Anchor and Heart Lacquer. This collection was sent to me for a review and I can honestly say that it's among my very favorites. If you love multi-chromes and you love glitters and just really intricate finishes, I think this is going to be a beautiful collection for you. I'm completely obsessed with all things Outlander, which it's inspired by anyways, but these are stunning and I've been so excited to share them with you. So I'll go ahead and get right into the swatches. First up is a very stubborn, and this is described as an orange brown red shift with a magenta peeking through at extreme angles with accents of red hollow micro glitter, scattered hollow pigment, and gold to copper to red ultra comb flakies. So these do have a little bit of texture going on in them. One coat to top coat is enough to smooth it right out, but it is something worth mentioning. So there's a quick look at that brush shot, and then I'll show you how very stubborn swatched on my natural nail. This is exactly what I love to see when swatching a multi-chrome collection. It is nice and opaque on its own. It's not one that you're going to have to layer over a black or darker color at all. One coat made for awesome coverage. I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and then show you how it built up for me with a second coat. So this second coat does easily bring it completely opaque. I went in a little thick here, but you definitely don't have to with this collection. Super easy to work with and very manageable. You can see those larger flakes in there. They do kind of stick up just a little bit, but a good coat of top coat will take care of those. So there's a look at that completed mini at two coats before a glossy top coat under artificial lighting and here's a view from another angle in direct sunlight with a glossy top coat. These polishes are all going to absolutely transform depending on the lighting source that you put them under. For very stubborn I had a lot of the deep fiery red tones and that gorgeous fiery orange shift. So next up is a rare woman and this is described as a scattered hollow micro pigment purple hollow micro glitter and a slightly metallic finish that shifts from rose pink to gold to orange to green and even blue at extreme angles. So these are true multi-chrome polishes. I'll go ahead and show you a quick look at that brush shot and then I'll show you how Rare Woman swatched on my natural nail. So here's a look at that first coat. This one is maybe a touch sheerer than the other but it does definitely have a ton of shimmer going on already as well as glitters. It did go on nice and evenly. You also don't have to worry too much about brush strokes with this collection. So I'll let that dry and then show you how it built up for me with a second coat. So here's a look at that second coat. Again, I just go in a little bit thicker, but it does bring this one to pretty much full coverage. If you go in thinner, you may need three with this polish depending on your application. Here's a look at that completed mani. Add just two coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. So super gorgeous here, nice and glossy. Just a little bit of texture running throughout from those flakies. So here's a view from another angle in direct sunlight with a glossy top coat, maybe a tiny bit of nail line peeking through here at two coats and a lot of that rose gold and green shift. This is my final swatch photo at an angle in that direct sunlight. So next up is the Minister's Cat, and this is described as a blue-green base with metallic gold shimmer, scattered hollow pigment, violet pink to gold ultra chrome flakies, and a beautiful orange to gold to lime green multi-chrome shift. So definitely a lot going on in this bottle. It feels so much like fall in a bottle to me, very deep and vampy with a beautiful amount of shift. So here's a quick look at how that first coat went on. This one is maybe a little bit darker than the others, which definitely does help with the coverage. You can still see I do have a tiny bit of nail line still kicking so I'm gonna let that dry and then show you how it built up for me with a second coat. So here's a look at that second coat. Again this second coat easily brings this one completely opaque for me. You do get a ton of that shift in all kinds of different colors mostly a very deep olive green and kind of a burgundy red with those purple ultra chrome flakies as well as that holographic effect. Just really pretty and intricate on the nail. Here's a look at that completed mani at two coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. So again maybe a little bit of texture going on. Here's a view for another angle with a glossy top coat in direct sunlight and then my final swatch photo at an angle again in that same direct sunlight. So next up is I Was Born For You, and this is described as a purple base that features a blue to purple to green shift, and certain lightings you can get a silvery light green as well, depending on the angle. This is accented by scattered hollow pigment, purple hollow micro glitter, and purple flashes from iridescent micro glitter as well. So again, a lot going on in this one bottle, but it does work beautifully together. Here's a quick look at how that first coat applied of I Was Born For You. This one is maybe on the sheer side as well. It does go on nice and smooth. It's really easy to work with. And and it's going to build up pretty well on itself as well. So I'll go ahead and let that dry and then show you how it built up for me with a second coat. I did work with a bit of a thicker second coat here. I had a little bit of pooling, but I think that was my application. I just cleaned it right up with acetone and a cleanup brush. I think one thing to mention is that these are very pigmented multi-chrome. So if you're prone to staining, I would definitely use a stain blocking base coat. I didn't really have any issues, but that's something to be mindful of. So with this one, I did go ahead and opt for a third coat just to make sure it was completely opaque. It did look like maybe 
there was a hint of nail line left, it definitely does not hurt that finish at all. So here's a look at that completed mani at three coats before a glossy top coat. And then here's a view once more from a different angle with a glossy top coat in that direct sunlight. So again, I did mostly get some green and purple flashes out of this one. This is my final swatch photo at an angle in that direct sunlight. So next up is You Are My Home, and this is described as an emerald green base that shifts from turquoise to blue to fuchsia. At certain angles, you may even catch some silver. This does have scattered hollow pigment, green iridescent micro glitter, and silver hollow micro glitter. So again, a lot going on. This one filmed a little bit muddy for me. I'm not sure if it was the angle, but this is definitely a very vivid and deep green to blue shift here. So here's a look at that first coat. This one applies just as smooth and easy as the others, maybe a tad sheer, but with a ton of shift and a ton of glitter already. I'll go ahead and let that dry and then show you how it builds up for me with that second coat. So here's a look at my second coat. Again, I did opt to go in for a bit of a thicker second coat. I had no issues with application at all and it did bring it completely opaque. I did have to maybe be a little bit mindful of some of the larger glitters in this polish. You can see one kind of hanging off the tip of my nail there. That's no problem at all really though. I just pushed it back on with the tip of my nail and I was good to go. So here's a look at that completed mani. I just two coats before a glossy top coat under artificial lighting. You and I'm telling you that this is the more accurate shot. It is definitely a very vivid and green to blue shift. So there's a look with a glossy top coat underneath almost indirect natural lighting. And this is my final swatch photo at an angle in direct sunlight. So next up is Cursed with Knowledge, and this is described as a turquoise base that shifts from violet to fuchsia to olive green. I did pick up a very strong blue shift here. It also has scattered hollow pigment, a sprinkling of a red to pink to gold to green shifting flakies. I did feel like the flakies in this polish are a little bit larger than any of the other flakies in the collection. So I'll go ahead and show you how Cursed with Knowledge swatched on my natural nail. This is another that starts out maybe a little bit sheer, but a good amount for a base here is definitely going to be able to build up on itself with a very strong shimmer. I did end up going for a little bit of a thicker first coat here, and I did have to be maybe just a little bit more mindful of some of those larger ultra chrome flakies. So here's a quick look at how it applied with a thicker second coat. It did bring this one completely opaque. If you go in thinner, you may be pushing it and maybe need to go in for a third coat, but I was really happy here with the finish at just two. So here's a look at that completed mani at two coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. So this polish had mostly very strong blue tones with some green in there and maybe a tint of purple as well. So here's a view from a different angle in direct sunlight with a glossy top coat. And this is my final swatch photo at an angle in that direct sunlight. So lastly, today I have Time Traveler and this is another just crazy beautiful stunner. This is described as a deep blue base that shifts emerald green to lime to gold to pink and features small and micro shifting chameleon glitter as well. So here's a quick look at that brush shot. I definitely did get very strong purple shimmer tones in here and maybe a bit of a greener toned or very deep blue base. So here's a quick look at how that applied with just that first coat. You can see how incredibly strong that purple shimmer is. Super beautiful, really great coverage at one coat. I can still see some nail line though, so I'll let that dry and then show you how it builds up for me with a second coat. So here's a look at that second and final coat and it does bring this one easily and completely opaque. I love those shifting micro flakes in here as well. It really adds something special to this polish and to this entire collection. So here's a look at that completed mani at just two coats before a glossy top coat underneath artificial lighting. So maybe a little less texture going on here but I definitely do recommend taking the time to add a nice glossy top coat. Here's a view from another angle in direct sunlight with a glossy top coat and this is my final swatch photo at an angle in indirect lighting. These are so completely different under any lighting source that you bring out. In the sun, you're going to get more of that hollow and maybe some of that shimmer, but in the shade, you're going to pick up any of those flakies and for sure a very strong shift. So that does wrap up my swatch and review of the Through the Stones collection. Again, these are available right now and I cannot recommend them enough. If you'd like to see more photos, I do have those available on my blog at sloppyswatches.com or you can also follow me on Instagram at sloppyswatches. So thanks so much for watching, guys. See you next time.